Hello, and welcome to how to encourage your child's positive behaviors and discourage your child's problem behaviors. My name is Kelly Rawl, and I'm the coordinator for pre-kindergarten and family engagement. We're glad you're here today, and uh, thank you for joining us. We are now joining this program in progress. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So first, sorry. So um, what behaviors you don't like to see in your children? So uh, please feel, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, tell me what you have in mind or you can uh, type it in in the chat box so we can all see it and you know share ideas of what behaviors do you want to work on uh, on your children? It's like inappropriate behavior negative behaviors, you can say. Any answer, maybe let's say crying is one of these behaviors that we don't like to see from our, from our children. Yeah, I'm being so naughty and just keep, uh, you know, like uh, begging to get things maybe. Begging to get things, so begging, keep insisting on getting things. Uh, what else? Maybe refusing to brush. Arguing. Teeth. Arguing. Okay, that's a big one. Uh, and some, someone wrote not responding to commands. Uh -huh. uh, the first time they are told. Responding to commands the first hear it okay what else being negative about themselves and everything mm -hmm. yeah being negative about themselves okay do we uh, struggle to have them uh, maybe clean their rooms yes yeah to clean their rooms okay and so on the list is so long we can keep talking about a lot of behaviors that we don't like to see from our children so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how are we going to get rid of these behaviors um, first we need to start by explaining why do we have these behaviors this is the function of a behavior so the function of a behavior is the reasoning behind this behavior so I'm doing a behavior for a reason. For example, um, I feel hungry, so I make food and I eat it. So the func the behavior that I, was, that I did is cooking. There is a function behind it, which is that I'm hungry. There is a reason. So when I talk about functional behavior in this lecture today, I will be meaning the reason behind the, this behavior. Why do, we have, why do we have this behavior in the first place? And I have this quote, <clears throat> children's behavior serve different purposes then the function of behavior is the purpose of this behavior and influenced by the circumstances in which it occurs and we will further explain this later on this lecture how the environment influenced the happening and the occurrence of this behavior so this will be the first part of the lecture today second we will uh, be covering the intervention after we understand why we have this behavior, why these behaviors are occurring, then we will cover how to intervene with these behaviors, how to reduce the occurrence of these behaviors. Okay, so here we have behaviors changed by age. We see this uh, little cute uh, child in the first photo crying uh, to his dad. He is probably crying because he's hungry, maybe because he's tired, sleepy, he has some pain. So for little babies, they have very small set of behaviors that they can produce to communicate with, with us. Uh, on, the other ex on the other example, we have this little kid, um, six years old, uh, asking for food because he's hungry. So his way of communicating is different than a baby. He, now he has some words to produce, to communicate with us. So his behaviors are emerging. We have more behaviors uh, when we grow older. But however, we have for other kids, when they're hungry, they will shout, they will cry, they will throw objects. So we have, we see these negative behaviors, inappropriate behaviors that happens when we, 
want something, when our kids want something, this is their way of communicating with us. So it changes with, with age and it also it changes with circumstances, what we have learned, what our kids have learned, uh, they produce. Uh, so as I just said that we have functions for different behaviors. But for this example, for these photos, we have the same behavior, which is crying. So on the left photo, uh, on the first photo in the, on the left, we have this uh, kid crying over homework. He, maybe he's tired, maybe he's, do, he's been doing this homework for like over an hour and he's so done with it. Maybe this homework is hard and he, he doesn't wanna do it. So he cries, this is his way of telling you that he's all done. He doesn't wanna continue with this homework. So it's his way of communicating with us. So the function of his behavior is to get away of, uh, from this, from doing the homework. On the second example, uh, this photo in the middle, we have this uh, kid uh, crying in the supermarket maybe he spotted his favorite candy or he wanted a toy or something. So he's asking his mom to get him uh, this toy as uh, Ms. Fatina has said that he's begging his mom to give him a toy. So he's crying for it. And we see this behavior as a way of this kid to communicate with us. Uh, on, this, on the third photo on the right, we have this kid crying to his dad while his dad is busy working. This happens all the time, especially with like online, uh, virtual work. We are busy, we're doing something and we have our kids crying for us. Uh, probably he wants to play with him. He doesn't understand the concept that my dad is busy now and I will leave him work and then we can play. No, he, I want your attention right now. Come and play with me. So all of these behaviors that we see uh, serves a function. And in this case, we have same behaviors, which is crying, and they all share the same function, which is um, or I mean different functions, which is uh, escaping from homework or running from homework and wanting something and wanting attention. On this example, we have different set of behaviors, but they all serve the same function. For example, this little kid right here bothering his mom while again she is working. Uh, he wants her attention. Uh, on this photo, another kid uh, is crying his lungs out he wants attention. Maybe he didn't have attention for, for a few hours, so now he wants some attention. Uh, on the third photo, this little boy is making a mess. Uh, he wants, maybe when he makes a mess, her, his parents will come and, you know, tell him, oh, you need to clean up your room, or like, you know, uh, reprimand him. So he will be having some attention. So here we have different set of behaviors, but serving the same function, which is attention. To here, we come to a conclusion that we have four functions of behavior. So all behaviors that we do, uh, even adults, uh, when we do something, we do it for a function, and it's gonna be one of these functions. Um, so the first one is sensory. The first one is we do an, a behavior for our, for our own pleasure. So we make this behavior because it makes us feel happy, like rocking on a chair, spinning a chair, like some kids would like to spin a chair or jump or, you know, we do a lot of behaviors, not for communicating, but because the feeling of this, with doing this behavior, it's, it's a good feeling, yeah? Uh, sometimes we do uh, some behaviors to remove a bad feeling, like itching. I'm not itching to show someone that, uh, like to communicate anything with anyone. I mean, I'm just doing it because it helps me to remove this bad, itchy feeling, right? Uh, so for the first uh, function of behavior, which is sensory, we're doing it for, for, for our own pleasure. The, the other three behaviors, we do it to communicate with people. So first one is escape, uh, which is running away from doing something, avoiding to do something, like, like in the case of homework, I don't wanna do homework. So I will cry to tell them that I don't wanna do homework. So I'm escaping through crying, I, I, I get rid of doing something. Uh, the second function is attention. As the example that we just mentioned, I'm crying to get your attention. I'm throwing a tantrum because uh, you will come and reprimand me and tell me not to cry. And this like negative attention is still attention. And I don't want you to understand this because some parents will be like, okay, I will like be tough with him and I will tell him, no, don't do this. But this is actually attention. If your child is not getting positive attention throughout the day, he will be seeking any kind of attention. 
either positive or negative. So reprimanding your kid, telling him not to do stuff, being tough with him. Sometimes it's if the function of the behavior is attention. If this is what he wants, you're giving him what he wants. And guess what? Next time he will do it even more because he knows that it's functioning. I do it and it gives me what I, what I, what I was wanting. So I will do it over and over again. The fourth, uh, the fourth function is tangible, tangible, which is accessing stuff. I am hungry. I ask my mom to make me food. That's the thing that I want. It's an item. I want to play with my siblings. So I go ask them, can I play with you? And they were like, okay, come. So I'm asking for an activity. Uh, so anything that I want, I'm asking for a hug. I'm asking for a toy. I'm asking for a candy. All of these things, I'm asking for something to have. So um, if you want to remember uh, these uh, functions, uh, we have an acronym for them, which is SEAT. S-E-A-T, seat for sensory escape, attention, and tangible. Okay, uh, now it's your turn. I think we had a small, uh, good introduction for the function of behavior. Now I want you to guess with me, what is the function for these behaviors? Let's start with the first one on the left. I will describe the behavior for you, and then you can either um, chime in and tell me what is it, or like type it in the chat box. For the first behavior, uh, this little cute girl rocking on the chair. What do you think the function of her behavior? Anyone? Any guesses? I would say she's having fun. She's having fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So she's having fun. She's doing it for her own, her, for own pleasure. Maybe she wants to have attention. That's another function. Uh, like a lot of the time, we will do such behaviors just because it's fun to do, right? So for the first one is sensory. Uh, second behavior, which is this little mm. uh, baby crying because his parent wants to brush his teeth. So he seems like not liking it. What do you think the function of this behavior? I think it's escape. Yeah, it's exactly. It's escape. It's very aversive. It's not good feeling. It's not pleasant for him. So he doesn't want to do it. So he thinks by crying, he will avoid having his teeth uh, brushed. Uh, for the third photo, we have this uh, these parents playing with their son while their daughter is standing there covering her face. I'm not sure if she's crying or not, but what is what do you think the function of her behavior? I guess she's seeking for attention because she's jealous of the parents playing with the little child. Definitely, this is uh, attention. Uh, she's doing it for attention. Uh, for a uh, picture here, we have this little boy trying to pull out his iPad from his mom. What do you think the function of this behavior? Yeah. The he's he's not getting his way. I guess the you said mentioned the tangible. Tangible, yeah. He wants to access an item. So don't worry about the, like the terms, just mm. try to understand that concept behind it. So I want to get something, so I will engage in this kind of behavior. It's awesome. So next we will move to understanding why do we have these behaviors? How do we recognize these behaviors? So what happens is we, in order to understand the functions, the reasoning uh, behind these behaviors, we need to understand the environment surrounding them. Where and when did this behavior happen? What happened before the behavior? What happened after the behavior? What causes the behavior to happen in the first place? And what, after the behavior happened, what, 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 what happened next? Did the kid get, get what he wants or did he not get it? What happened? So we need to understand why the, fun, the, in, like, why the, the kid is in, engaging in this behavior by understanding the environment surrounding this behavior. So let's, let's start with this chart by uh, doing the behavior, which is uh, for in this example, we have this little uh, girl crying over homework. We need to know what happened before that. Why, is she, why did she start crying? over a homework. 
uh, this is our behavior of interest. Uh, so we have this term called antecedent. Again, don't worry about the terminology, just uh, understand the idea. So the antecedent is the, like the, anything that happened right before the behavior. So in simple terms, what causes the behavior to happen? Uh, in this example, we have this photo. Uh, this girl might be uh, doing his her homework for over an hour. So she got bored. Um, it's maybe it's hard. Maybe she just started her her mom is telling her to do this homework. So what caused the behavior is that her mom told her to do her homework. This is what happened before the behavior. And then what happens next after the behavior, after she started crying is what we call consequence. So the consequence of her behavior, uh, the result of her behavior is what we have next, which is she got a break. She got away. Her mom told her, okay, fine. She, she was tired. So let's take uh, 30 minutes break or an hour break. And then we'll get back to doing homework. So what happens here is that, that this little girl confirms in her mind that every time she wants to get away from something, she will cry. Why? Because it's working. Her mom will tell her to get a break and she will all like even apply it to other situations. Like in some situations, she will be like, okay, I don't want to clean my room. What I will do? I will cry because I know that it's been working. I don't, it's, I don't want, I don't like, it's not, it's not good to do my, my, to clean up my room. So I will cry. My mom will give me, uh, will give me a break, will tell me, okay. And she, maybe she will do it herself. So I know right now I learned that this bad behavior, this negative behavior will give me what I want. Because remember, um, behaviors are ways to get our needs met. So if, it, if I'm getting my needs met, that's it, I'm fine. Okay, now that we covered the first part of this um, lecture, which is uh, understanding the function of behavior, uh, we will move on to do the intervention, to intervene with these behaviors. Okay, now we have all this, uh, like we have a big list of behaviors, uh, crying, refusing to brush teeth, uh, struggling with bedtime. Uh, there's a lot of behaviors, begging, insisting on uh, something very bad. Uh, these are all behaviors that we don't really like to see uh, from our kids. Um, now let's understand how to intervene, how to reduce these behaviors, even if it's not, um, reduce these behaviors if it's not really appropriate, which is uh, the intervention. Okay, now it's your turn to tell me what behaviors you like. This time you like to see in your children. So again, feel free to tell me, unmute yourself, tell me what you think or type it in in the chat box. To follow directions, of course. First uh -huh. thing comes to my mind. Definitely. <laughs> gonna read books in the chat. What, what was what was in the chat? No, I'm gonna read what's gonna come. I'm waiting for people to oh helpful to be helpful. Thank you, thank you. You're a good help. <laughs> okay, maybe the opposite of the first list, like uh, uh, going to bed early. Doing things without me asking, uh -huh. the parent is saying. Well, doing things without me asking. Mm -hmm. maybe this is something I would say that we will reinforce it, but you should set expectations. So if he knows that he's expected to clean up his room and he will get reward rewarded later, he will do it, but like we need to set expectations, maybe do like a schedule of like, yeah, we will have like a visual of him. Uh, every time you clean up your room, you will get something. So we'll have something set up for him to set the expectations. We don't just expect him to do it himself because that requires like self-management, which is not really set on his age. And also someone said to understand when I say no, to stop crying. Yeah. Okay, now to stop crying, okay, that's a good one, okay, do you have any other ideas? Let's go back to our first list, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, a good list for us to start, 
Okay, so we'll move from there. Okay, we have this list of good behaviors that we want to see in our kids. Uh, how do we get there? So let's uh, start with explaining this. Uh, so altering the environment to promote positive behavior. We just explained how environment play a major role in like in like implementing this behavior and forming this behavior. Uh, what happens before the behavior will result in this behavior happening. What happens after the behavior will result in this behavior happening more in the future. So now we need to alter, we need to change the environment in order to change these not good or not uh, appropriate behaviors. We will get back to our first chart, the antecedent uh, behavior and consequence. For the antecedent, uh, let's give examples of what we can do here. So uh, for the antecedent, um, we can change the environment to not cause the behavior happen in the first place. We don't wait for the behavior to happen and then intervene. No, let's intervene even before it happens. Um, for example, um, access to tangible. Let's uh, imagine that we have a, a kid that has snacks on the table. And now he asks you for a snack. I want a chocolate. And he would be like, no, it's not available. You can't have it. It's very hard for him to accept that it's not available. If it's in the, on the table, like, I want it. I want to have it. So he will start having this behavior of, like, tantruming, crying. Uh, he, will, uh, he will see behaviors that you don't like. So what we're going to do is we will make sure to remove it from his side before even we have this behavior. So if you don't want to allow candies at certain times, he doesn't even know need to know that it's in the house. Hide it somewhere. Uh, if you don't want him to use iPad for too much, if it's not iPad time, hide it. Every time, everything that you don't want to see, to, that you don't want to have your kids ask for, because even if you teach him a good behavior, but you still don't want him to have access to the iPad, it must be hidden somewhere, provide him with a different activity. Um, this is one way, and then we will talk about other ways to change and manipulate and uh, alternate, uh, altering the, uh, what happens before the behavior. Then uh, let's talk about how do we change the behavior itself. Teach him a replacement behavior. So what we need is, if this behavior, which is, for example, crying to get um, candy, is working. Every time he cries, you give him a candy, it's working, it's functioning, I'm good, I'm going to use it forever. But what if there is another behavior, I give him another behavior, which is also working, but it, it's not a, an inappropriate behavior. So I will start asking, instead of crying for items, instead of crying for what I want, I will start asking for what I want. So this is um, how we um, change the behavior. We give him other options, other choices of behaviors. And for the consequence, uh, remember that the consequence is what happens right after the behavior. So after I behave, there's something that's going to happen. This thing, which is like gonna, maybe my parents will give me what I want. So it's rewarding the behavior. It's increasing, it's reinforcing the behavior. So my behavior will, in the future, I will be more likely engaged in the same behavior. But if my parents are not rewarding this behavior, they're saying no, and they're sticking with no. No means no. You're not having access to iPad or to a, to a chocolate. So in the future, this behavior will decrease. The probability of this behavior to occur will uh, in eventually uh, decrease in the future. So um, this is one way of doing uh, of turning of the environment. Uh, let's talk about some strategies for some of the behaviors we have, like for example, the behaviors that are caused because of attention. So I want attention or my child want, wants attention. How do I give him an, a good behavior to use instead of crying, for example, or shouting or, you know, throwing objects? Um, I will work first on that, what happens before the behavior. So I will make sure to give my child frequent attention throughout the day. So, and it's different from, from child to child. Some of them, you will need to give them attention every hour. 
Some of them every two hours, some of them every, every three hours. It really depends on your child and you read it. You, I mean, you read um, his behaviors. Uh, for example, you realize that you live quietly for two hours, but after two hours, your child will start crying or engaging in certain behaviors. You pause for a second and realize how, uh, how much time has spent before we have this behavior happens. And then we know that, uh-huh, so my child requires attention every, for example, two hours. So I will make sure to provide him with attention every one and a half hour. So every one and a half hour, one and a half hour I will go to him, see what he's working on. I will play with him. I will give him one-to-one -one interaction. Okay, it's our time now. What do you want us to do? Give him always, and uh, it's a good strategy to always give him choice. What do you want to do? Do you want to play? Um, with play-doh do you want us to do some coloring do you want to uh, have a walk outside so always see what uh, uh he wants to do and engage in these uh, uh interactions with him to give him attention um and then the other thing is to set a clear expectations on when the, the attention will be available for example you will be uh maybe you'll tell your kid that you will be playing with him Every, every day after dinner. So he knows that after dinner, he will get some attention or he knows that before bedtime, he will get some attention. He will get like 15 minutes, 30 minutes of play time or uh, reading a story of any kind of attention that he likes. So he knows that, okay, so I'm not gonna engage in this behavior because I know that it's, attention is coming. I'm not gonna engage in a, in a bad behavior to get attention because it's already coming. I know that after dinner, I will have my time with my parents. So. I will not get engaged in bad behaviors. Uh, so this is one way of altering the environment before we even have the behavior. And then for the replacement behavior, we need to give him another behavior. Okay, so if I didn't give you behavior and you needed to have, I, I mean, if you if I didn't give you attention I, and, I, and you needed to have some attention, ask for it. Maybe let's teach him some way to ask for attention. Okay, mom, can, can you, Come and uh, play with me for a little bit. Can you um, uh, help me with something? Um, when he's playing with his uh, peers, uh, don't just like in, don't just let him um, like rough play with his peers. With his peers, maybe tap their shoulders. Maybe ask them to join him and play with him. So teach him, tell him. Okay, this is not the way you do it. You have to ask if you want me to come to play with you. Okay, I'm gonna come back. You have to ask for it. So we're giving him a replacement behavior that will give him the same results when we when he engages in a bad behavior. Uh, second, we make sure that your child encounters enough opportunities to gain attention. So throughout the day, assign simple tasks that are not aversive, that are not uh, that are like not hard tasks like maybe after lunch take your plate to the dishwasher or um, help me uh, do something very easy or finish uh, this uh, task that, like clean up the table wipe the table any easy task that your child will and you know because you already know you know your child you know what are what things are not pleasant for your kids and what things are pleasant for your kids so you will see things that he likes to do and he, he he doesn't mind to do and reward him like after he helps you helps you with something that you assign to him good job you did great you're a good help to your mom i'm so proud of you so reward him give him attention talk to him like make him gain the attention which is a very uh, great strategy to give him a way to do other behaviors uh, consequence intervention. So let's now talk about what, how do we change what happens after behavior? So in all uh, the functions that we have, like attention, uh, access to tangible or escape, all these functions, if we have a bad behavior, make sure to always not follow it with rewarding, not follow it with reinforcement. That means that if your child is asking for a toy and he's crying for it, don't give him and stick with no 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 means no if your child is crying for attention and you give him attention don't do it after he engages in, in, in inappropriate behavior make sure to withhold attention withhold 
uh, reinforcement uh, uh, to your kids. Uh, and remember, as I said, negative attention is still attention. Sometimes we just forget, we just give attention. Uh, we think that uh, if we told him to stop, stop, do it don't do this he will not do it but if the function for his behavior is attention he will it, this will encourage him to do it even more in the future because what it's working if my behavior is working there is no reason for me to quit doing it uh, second uh, some strategies to deal with um, the behaviors that his function is uh, tangible uh, first of all as I mentioned above um, uh, I mean, second, we will talk about remove unavailable items. I already talked about this. And also clarify what items are available and what items are not available. So uh, if it's okay for him to have access to iPad, then it's okay. I clarify to the, this to him. It's okay to play with your iPad for two hours, maybe, or one hour, depends on you. Um, maybe it's available for him to have like one chocolate a day or uh, one chips a day. So it's really depend on your preference and then clarify, make expectations clear that it, this is what you're going to have um, and this is what you can't have at the moment. So we set clear expectations before we even have this behavior happens. But what if the behavior still happens? Uh, we, for this behavior, we need to teach him another behavior. Ask always tell your child if he's crying, if he's engaging in an inappropriate behavior, always tell him this is not the way how we do it. Let's try again. Let's, let's, let's do it a better way. How about you ask for what you want? Um, and then teach your child to accept alternative item, wait and accept no. So iPad is not available right now, but how about we uh, play this game? So you give him an alternative. Um, Let's wait. Maybe iPad is not available right now, but we can we can play with iPad after dinner. So make him uh, wait and teach him to wait. And teach him to accept no. If it's a no, it's a no. Um, and a way of teaching him to accept no is to go through the consequence intervention, which is what happens after the behavior. So uh, we uh, provide tangible. We provide the items only with good behaviors. If we have bad behaviors, we don't provide any tangibles or any items uh, for inappropriate behavior. And remember, when you say no, stick to it. For the escape behavior, uh, we also gonna uh, set the clear expectations. We gonna modify the environment. Uh, we will make it less aversive. So if my child doesn't want to do homework in a certain place. Let's make it fun for him. Okay, let's do it uh, in the backyard or let's do it let's, some, like, in, like in a weekend or so. Let's go to a coffee shop. I work on my laptop and you do your homework. So let's make it exciting for him. Um, uh, brushing teeth. If he thinks that brushing teeth is not pleasant, he doesn't like to do it, it's so boring. Let's do it a family time brushing teeth. Maybe with all the siblings, let's make a, let's sing while we brush the teeth. Let's, you know, uh, dance while we brush our teeth. So let's make it pleasant, modify the environment, make it less aversive for your kid. Um, provide frequent breaks for long activities. Let's say that they're working on homework. It's very long. They've been working for, for so long. We will see uh, bad behaviors like crying over homework. I don't want to do it. I'm so tired. I'm so done. How about we uh, give them breaks every like 15 minutes, every 30 minutes? We'll have like a break. And then use uh, visual cues to see, to tell them when breaks are available. So it's easy for the kid to know that uh, every 30 minutes we will have a break. So, uh, at 10, we'll have a break, and then at 10.30, we'll have a break, and then at 11, we'll have a break. So he knows that I don't need to engage in a bad behavior to get a break because I will get it anyway if I waited until uh, 10.30. So I know to wait. So when we set clear expectations, when we tell them what uh, will be uh, done, they will know not to engage in, a, in an inappropriate behavior because good things that they will behave uh, inappropriately for will come anyway. So I will just wait. 
um, <laughs> replacement behavior. Uh, teach your child to ask for a break. Also, if it's been a while and they're tired, it's, instead of crying, don't cry. You can just, or, or like at the beginning, even like it, you can use it as an antecedent. When we start doing something, you tell her, we will have a break every half an hour. But if you feel tired before that, ask me and we will have a short break. So asking instead of crying, instead of tantruming, will give you what you want. So they will learn to ask. Uh, allow your child to choose what activities and when. This is a very, very effective strategy. If the activity is they, like is aversive, they don't want to do it. How about we make them choose the way to do it um, and the when? For example, uh, like when giving breaks. For example, I tell them that uh, every half an hour we'll have a break, but then maybe he's expected to have a long break, like a thirty minutes break. And this is not the case. I want him to just have like a ten minutes break. So I will tell him. I will ask him, "What do you want? Do you prefer to have like a five minutes break?" or a 10 minutes break. So I will make him choose the break that he will get. So he chooses, for example, of course, most of the time they will choose 10 minutes. So he'll say, okay, 10 minutes, you, you chose 10 minutes, so we'll have 10 minutes break. So make him decide, make him participate in the decision will uh, encourage him to not engage in bad behaviors because he made the decision to have a 10 minute break. Why would I cry after this 10 minutes, minutes, minutes break in? So, I will just get back to doing homework. Uh, and also for the activities, uh, do you, uh, or maybe uh, like in the breaks, maybe you can ask him during the break, do you wanna uh, do some, uh, you wanna go outside or play with your siblings or any available activity you pick, you, you, you uh, let him pick which activity he wants to engage in. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Consequence, of course, allow breaks for appropriate behaviors with withhold escape for inappropriate behaviors. As I said, for all these inappropriate behavior, make sure to not give behaviors for uh, to, to not give reinforcement for inappropriate uh, for inappropriate behaviors and give rewards and reinforcement for uh, good behaviors. And when you say no, stick to it. Reinforcing. So, what do we get out of this uh, talk? Is reinforcing appropriate behavior? is going to increase the behavior in the future. Something uh, like when a behavior happens and we reward it in the future, we will see an increase in the occurrence of this behavior. And the behavior that we don't like to see and we withhold, we don't give reward to it, we don't reinforce it, we will see in the future that it decreases. Uh, examples of reinforcers may be clapping and cheering, giving high fives, giving favorite food or toy, giving hugs or tickles, offering special activities like, I'm um, sorry, like playing game and praises. Uh, one strategy of giving uh, or, or delivering reinforcers or rewards is through this talking board. You can like Google it and find fun activity, uh, fun talking boards. But the main idea here is that we have like these uh, five blocks and on each block, they're working on something. Like for example, um, they're working on homework. Um, every correct answer they do, they get a mark or like they put a star, a heart, any shape they want, any uh, character or cartoon they like. So you will put it here until they get five of them felt. Then they will get the big reinforcement that they've been working on. So we have little reinforcers. Every one we, every time we do something correct, we get a star. That's a good reinforcers. And then until we finish five, we get what we ask for. And it's very important to let them choose again what they want um, for reinforcers. An example of this field is for this uh, little boy, James. He is working for a lunch with a friend. So uh, to deserve this lunch, he should be completing all of these uh, squares uh, before he gets the big uh, reinforcer. Uh, you can do it like not very fancy, just like piece of paper, uh, write. Uh, uh, what do we have? Sometimes it's 10 things, sometimes it's uh, five things. It really depends on your preference. Uh, you can do it for small activities. You can do it for uh, for the whole day or the whole week. Or you can do it for something like uh, cleaning their room uh, a week in a row. You can do it for um, 
homeworks. You can do it for all kinds of things that you want your kids to work uh, for. And then you will put the reinforcer that they choose at the bottom here. And then you choose the star, heart, whatever shape you want. Uh, if you want any other fun ideas, you can Google it. It's very fun and it's very effective. I want you to know also that the most effective reinforcer is social reinforcer, such as praise. It's very cheap to reinforce. You don't have to really buy toys every day or to offer candy. You can just praise them. Good job, way to go, super. Like any kind of praise, you've got your brain in here. Hooray, beautiful, you rock it. I'm so proud of you. So a lot of praises that you can use, it's been proven to be very effective in classroom. It's been proven to be very effective at home, everywhere. Praises are a good tool to use all the time. Okay, is it that easy? knowing the function of behavior and then not uh, reinforcing bad behaviors and it will decrease and reinforcing and rewarding good behaviors and it will increase. Yeah, it is. It is easy if you know the rule, but then there is something that is not so easy about it, which is an extinction burst. I don't want you to worry about the terms. Uh, what I want you to understand here is that if a child is engaging in a, in a behavior and it's been working forever, for years. He's been doing this behavior every time. For example, this uh, little girl, every time she goes out with her mom, she wants something uh, to, 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 get, to, to get something from the store. She cries, she tantrums. Her mom doesn't want to be embarrassed in, the, in front of everyone. So she gives her what she's asking for. And then her mom attended this lecture and understand that mm, not reinforcing this behavior and sticking with no will decrease the behavior. So I will do it. So she started doing it and not rewarding and not giving her what she wants. Then the child, what we expect is that this behavior will go down. But before it goes down, it will actually go up. So we'll have this curve here. So this is the baseline. This is before we uh, implement any behavior right here. Uh, I mean, uh, any intervention. So this is the behavior. It's functioning. It's stable. I do it because it's working. Crying is working. So I will do it over and over again. But next on this graph, when we start applying an intervention, we, when we start saying no, and we, when we start sticking with no, what will happen? This behavior will increase. Why it increases? Because the child still think that it's been working for so long there must be something wrong i will keep trying i will cry even harder in order to get what i want because i know that it's working so he will or she will do the behavior in an, a more intense way until eventually they will realize that it's no longer working so this behavior will go down and, and especially if we're teaching them another uh, alternative behavior of like asking instead of crying, asking, removing the things that are not available, you know, working on all the strategies that we talked about. But what if you can't be consistent? Sometimes it, we're busy. We have a long day. Uh, we can't, we, we, we just want to like, we just want them to stop crying. So what we can do? Um, we have a, a solution for you. This is uh, called matching law. Again, don't worry about the terminology. I want you to understand the concept behind it. So uh, this behavior, this little girl is asking her mom for something. I don't know what it is. Well, she's asking politely her mom for something. Behaviors that reinforce more often increase in the future. So uh, her mom, like let's say the 80% of the time that she asks her mom politely, she gives her what she wants. If it's available, uh, and then when we do this, uh, when we do, when we have the same function, which is asking for something, asking for an item, but we do it in a bad behavior, in an inappropriate behavior, we cry. The mom will not give us what we want most of the time, not all of the time. The behavior will decrease in the future. In short, let's simplify all of this um, talk. Behaviors that are reinforced or rewarded most of the time, like 80% of the time, is this be good behavior is rewarded, it will increase.
but behaviors that are not rewarded most of the time. So not every time he will cry, I will give him what he wants. Most of the time I will say no and I will stick with no, but sometimes I will just give him what he wants. Like 90% of the time I will stick with no and I'll be like, no, you're not gonna have it. So this behavior eventually will decrease in the future. If you stick with it, with no for 100%, it will happen faster. We, of course, we will have this extinction burst, but uh, eventually we will have this behavior decreases. But our brain, our body realizes that I'm doing two behaviors. One is good and one is bad. But when I do the good behavior, I get what I want most of the time. But when I do the bad behaviors, I don't get what I want most of the time. Most of the time, I turn, I'm, I'm turned down. So I'm not going to do the bad behaviors. Uh, it's more it's more beneficial for me to uh, to do the, the good behaviors. So I will start engaging in the good behavior more often, and I will not engage in the bad behavior uh, anymore or less often. In conclusion, uh, reinforcement is one of the most powerful strategies available for teaching your child. Uh, reinforcing appropriate behavior, behaviors increase the probability that it will occur in the future and not reinforcing and if inappropriate behaviors decrease the probability that they will occur in the future. Any questions? I do have a question. Yes, go ahead. So, um, a lot of your examples tonight were for younger children. Do you have any suggestions for people with teenagers? Um, do you have any example in mind that we can work or on? Strategies, yes. Yeah. Do you have any example in mind, like um, uh, some like some bad behavior? Give me like an example of a bad behavior that uh, a teenager engaged in. <clears throat> Um, can we go drive, practice driving tonight? No, it's too late or I'm too tired, whatever. Oh, I'm never going to learn how to drive. And then she stomps up the stairs and yells and <clears throat> uh, fusses. Yeah. So it's, uh, and she won't speak to you for the rest of the night. Okay. Yeah. So this, uh, these strategies that we talked about is it's even work for adults like we, you can use it with anyone, really. Uh, for teenagers, like this example, uh, if they say that, okay, they, if they get upset, if they go and don't take to you for the rest of the night or, their, or the rest of the week, the one thing that we need to do is ignore the behavior. Ignore what they said, okay? No is a no. You're not getting what you're asking for. And instead, we can work out something else. Maybe we can do it on another day. Maybe when I'm, I'm not tired, we can uh, go for a drive. But for right now, no is a no. And you have to, because it's not easy, and it's not always easy, that's why I explained the burst. These behaviors will increase because it, it, some in some way, he said that, okay, he got upset, and after you got, he got upset, you came to his room and you're like, okay, let's do it just for today. It's not just for today. It's going to be for today and next week. And every time he wants to get something, he will do the same kind of behavior. He will act out. He will tell you. He will not talk to you. Uh, he will go to his room. Uh, and, you know, so you will see the same kind of behaviors happening. Why? Because what he wanted from the first time he did the behavior got achieved. So you, you told him, okay, let's do it just for tonight, but it's actually, is gonna happen over and over again. So the one uh, rule that we need to do is to stick with no, and then also at the same time, teach him to ask politely, teach him to, uh, we like we have a schedule, maybe let's work it out another day, I like, you know, other strategies. And in the chat box, we said, like not wanting to do their homework, or not wanting to go to school or participate in school. So older children who are not um, wanting to go to school or do their homework. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's exactly the same way because you are the parent, you're in control. If, uh, and also because like in, throughout this lecture, I was talking about like simple, like reinforcers for kids, but it's also for uh, uh, 
older um, uh, kids or teenagers mm -hmm. see what they like to do, what they in like to engage in, and um, reinforce their be their good behaviors by giving them the things that they like to do. So not wanting to do homework, same thing, okay? Let's, um, maybe let's not do a schedule, but let's, after you finish your, make, like some more, some kids will have, like will like to have a schedule, but the other kids, okay, let's, after you do your homework, you choose to do something for fun. Maybe let's go out for a drive or maybe let's uh, uh, play a game together, a video game or anything that they prefer to do. So it's the same, but it's different reinforcers or different rewards based on their preference. So always ask them what they want. It's different from kids to teenagers, but the concept is the same. Don't say yes to their bad behaviors and always give them other options, always give them options. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a question, please. Yeah. Thank you. Why is it all the thing? I can hear the arguing. This <laughs> is <laughs> Mama, this is Mommy. This is Mommy. Okay, we have another question in the chat box until uh, Lila is ready. So mm -hmm. another lady says, Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, I have a question. If the child asking for something while the mom driving and the mom said no, then uh, like uh, he starts like crying and playing tantrum. Uh, and then uh, make something dangerous, like uh, open the uh, door lock. So uh, what the mom should do in this situation? Okay, is it happening right now? Are you safe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's happening a lot. And I explain many times that it's something dangerous and it's happened again and again and again. It's never stopped. Okay, so... So our rule, when you stick to a no, it's when we, we are in a safe situation. But remember, uh, as I mentioned, the matching law, which is you're not always gonna, would be able to say no, right? Sometimes you will have to just um, give them what they want, like um, not really what they want, but like give them something to stop them from engaging in that dangerous behavior. But then explain to them that uh, like, this is not proper behaviors, or even see what is in the first place having this behavior to happen. So kind of give like examples of why is your kid engaging in a behavior in the car? Is he asking? Actually, she, we're asking for ice cream. And okay. So uh, we have appointment, we don't have time to get uh, ice cream. So I said, no. And usually when she's play tantrum, I know that that uh, that I should to say no. And usually I said no, like mm -hmm. all the time I said no. But she's keep keeping doing that. I don't know why. <laughs> so so the function of her behavior is access, uh, accessing to item, which is ice cream. So when she does ask for an item in a safe place, always stick with no. When it's safe, when it's safe to ignore the behavior. Always stick with no, but when it's not safe, like maybe try to play with it. And I will say that even sometimes, um, try to like it's an it's a suggestion. It's not maybe feasible, but sometimes if we if they're if if they're not hungry, maybe when they go out every time they go out, realize we have a pattern. We realize this pattern, so they ask for, for ice cream or candy or whatever. So make sure that they have something to eat before you take a ride in the car. Mm -hmm. And you will try to avoid this behavior from happening in the first place. Uh, but if it happens, uh, I would say that it's very, sometimes it's very hard to just ignore it, especially if it's not safe. Uh -huh. I have a question. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> rather to use the word no because always 
the mother, you know, when the child say something or do something, say, no, don't do that. Don't do that. No, no, no. So the child, you know, it's everything is no. Yeah. Can we use another word, you know, mm -hmm. ready to use no? Okay. So uh, I, as I said, that we need to stick with no, not the same phrase, but like we need to say with not not giving them what they want. Uh, sometimes when you say no, don't get that, it's not available in a way. Sometimes if the function of their behavior is attention, they're seeking attention, they want you to get upset. They, they, they like it, they like to see you upset. You're engaging with them, as long as you're engaging with them, so they're happy. So if you say no, sometimes it makes them happy. So we're not gonna, do it if they keep engaging in the behavior uh the way we can um if they maybe you don't want to say no in this you know um firm way but mm -hmm. you just make it clear that this is not available don't, you don't have to say no just tell them okay you want your ipad right now it's not available uh, we will have access to it tomorrow you don't have to literally say no but you just make it clear that it's not available and then make it clear when with, will it be available because candy may, might not be available at night time, but it might be available in the morning. So make it clear that no, but I'm not gonna, if you don't wanna use no, because this is not uh, what I really meant that to use no, no, but mm -hmm. to just make it clear that it's not available. So you're just still gonna tell him that, so chocolate or candy is not available right now because it's nighttime, but you will have access to a candy of your choice in the morning so they know that it's not available right now but it's going to be available in the morning so i will not engage in this behavior right now but i'm gonna uh, ask for it and teach them okay in the morning ask me uh for what you want and i will give you a choice uh for example when you know um reading another books um i apply in my children you know ready to say no I used to use the words, I have a great idea. Mm -hmm. You know, that word, I have a great idea. Yeah. What about we can do this one, that one, give it choices. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. That's Rather good. to use, no, that's, uh, as I say, I was reading other books, so uh, they say that don't, parents don't try to use uh, the, the words, no, no, no. Try to find the other words to replace that word no mm -hmm. yeah exactly. it, it, it works mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's just make it clear to them so it's it's not literally saying no what i meant is not literally saying no but sticking with the not availability of of attention if they engage with the ever back at the negative behavior they're not availability of right. um item if they engage in negative behavior they're not availability of a break if they engage in a bad behavior if they engage in a bad behavior and while they were doing their homework you gotta keep doing it because this is what we're gonna do but guess what if you finish this so we will give them expectations when we will have a homework uh, a break so if you finish this this and that we will have a homework then but you don't really have to be firm and say no because as i told you it might serve a function of attention they will might they might be enjoying it and the behavior will still be going thank you so it's a, it's hello a great, yeah mm -hmm. i have a question yes. um i want to know more about um, negative reinforcement like when do we apply the negative reinforcement versus the positive reinforcement something like punishment like when do we apply can we like get some examples Maybe the negative reinforcement would work better in the situation versus the positive one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, in like in our field, uh, using negative reinforcement and positive reinforcement is still reinforcement, but it's a long story, so I'm not gonna like expand on it. But we use like reinforcement and we use punishment. Usually, most of the time, we try to use reinforcement because like if I'm reinforcing a behavior, like the matching law we saw, I'm reinforcing the good behavior uh, most of the time. So it will eventually increase. No need to really um, punish the bad behavior. But let's say that the, the bad behavior is like dangerous. 
and uh, maybe self-harming, maybe um, something that is, we can't wait to get, to get it reduced, then we can apply some uh, punishment uh, strategies, which is not aversive. Uh, it might be, um, for example, like time out, but time out will not work for the, for the function of escape. So if the child is uh, engaging in an activity and he acted out and you're like, okay, time out, you go, uh, this is a punishment. This is a strategy to uh, remove something from him. So it's punishment. You're trying to reduce the behavior. But if he wants to escape from doing an activity, you will see an increase. But in other cases, uh, like attention, attention, uh, you, you can give him time out because if he's acting out for attention, he wants to get engaged with you and you like you um, uh, let him stay uh, away from you for a little bit, it might work. But usually what we advise and what we work uh, and what we use in our field uh, is reinforcement. Most of the time it's working, but you need to stick with it. We have one more question in the chat box. Yeah. Um, so, actually, we have a couple of um, other questions. So, um, I have to go back to it. So, one parent said, I've tried to get mine to bring up her grades to be able to hang out with friends, but overall, she just wants to drop out. Maybe. And a ninth grader. Okay, maybe uh, hanging out with her friends is not the most preferred thing that she wants to do. So what do we do is we uh, we do something like called preferred uh, preference assessment. So our, our reference uh, preference assessment. So we make sure that what we want her to work for is really what she wants to work for. So maybe ask her, give her choices. Uh, is that really what you want to work for, uh, for or not? So this is one way. And also another way is to um, work on um, like uh, bringing up her grades through doing schedules, uh, uh, management with her. Um, uh, you know, other there's a lot of strategies to try to uh, bring her up her grades. But for working on something, it must be really worthy of working on. It must be really something that she really wants to work, uh, to work on. And also if she's, if she gets to hang out with her friends very often, it's not something that she really wants, right? But if it's something that is valuable, she doesn't get to have very often, like for some kids, uh, for example, like uh, going to Disneyland, which is very expensive, I know, but like for some kids, this is something that they, they doesn't, they don't uh, have to do very often so it's very reinforcing for them because it's not something that they do every day so choose the things and ask her and read what she really likes to do and give her choices of if you want to do this or you want to do that so uh, always make sure that what you have her work for is what she really really likes to do thank you now we um, have another question that says, how can we get an eight-year-old to stop talking back or always being on the defensive? Mm -hmm. So um, again, we will uh, go back to reinforcing, rewarding behavior. So if we are, uh, this is like arguing, our child or our kid is arguing with us uh, and, he's, uh, and he gets defensive because we keep talking to him and we keep arguing with him, he's arguing back, this is something that is gonna keep up because this is kind of reinforcing for him. So try to avoid if we get to a point that he starts uh, talking back and gets defensive, try to avoid talking. Tell him that, okay, it's end of conversation right now. We will talk later. When we are in a, in a better mood, uh, we can also uh, use strategies like, okay, let's calm down, let's go out, let's not, let's leave this room that uh, we're talking in, and then maybe later we can talk and uh, be quiet and then arrange our ideas. But mainly, the main thing here is uh, to, if you realize that, like, 
talking back is making him engaged. If this is something that he enjoys to do, even if he looks upset, but he's keep doing it, uh, try to like not giving him what he wants. Not to come to an agreement with everybody, it's just everything. Um, try to find things that she she enjoys doing. Maybe try to dive into her uh, things. Like uh, uh, it's it's really every every kid is is different, and he enjoys in different things. But um, yeah, like try to see something that he likes that he enjoys, and then we can get from there. Okay. Uh, if you're not getting nervous. Okay, so this is, um, yeah, I, I read your question uh, about uh, she's she doesn't like to go out. It's sometimes it's just, you know, the personality. Some people are introverts, some people are extrovert. But if we want them to, you know, uh, get out of their comfort zone, talk to more people, we need to have to to have them do it gradually. So. Um, uh, and also make it fun. So if they don't want to be around certain people, don't force them to do it because it's going to be aversive. Uh, if it's fun for them, if it's a fun activity, maybe have them uh, do something they like, like skating or um, I don't know what activities they might like, uh, soccer, other activities that they enjoy, and then have them start talking to their peers when they're comfortable. Uh, when they're not comfortable, it's going to be aversive for them. They don't, they're not going to like it. So don't really force it on them. Did that answer your question? Well, I can really tell that um, encouraging positive behavior and discouraging uh, negative behavior uh, is an important topic. Uh, I would like to um, remind uh, all of us that we are not perfect parents. Uh, none of us are. Um, I wasn't a perfect parent when my kids were little, and I'm not a perfect parent now raising a grandchild. So um, we all just do the best we can with what we have, with the tools we have. And tonight, I just want to thank our speaker for giving us some more tools in our toolkit that um, hopefully we can use to um, have a um, more cohesive family and um, better behaved children. So thank you very much you. for um, speaking with us tonight and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom. And we just um, hope to have you back again sometime. Yeah, definitely. Of course, I'd be more than happy to. Thank you so much, Rowan Noor. I appreciate that. And uh, if you didn't, if you haven't signed, please sign in uh, that uh, form, so I can email you the the uh, PDF of this PowerPoint, so you can have the um, those uh, token that Rowan mentioned. I love that idea. And also, you can compare the actions of your children. You can compare it to that you know, the, the three or four uh, categories that have been men uh, mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank um, you. Also, you might, uh, Rowan, I don't know if you're um, okay with this, but maybe you could put your email address in the chat box so that if people have questions they would like to ask you uh, privately, then they could do that. Yeah, feel free to message me, email me with any questions. Um, I would be more than happy to answer your questions. Wonderful. So uh, thank you again. And I think it's time to close our meeting to bring our meeting to a close. Uh, our families are probably ready for us to uh, get back to them this evening. And uh, I just, again, I want to thank everyone for participating and, and to Ro Rowan for speaking to us. Uh, have a great evening, and we're going to sign off. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye. Thank you.